Hi, so what are my top five audiobooks to listen to while working on my art? Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on The Simpsons television show. I've been working on this show for over 25 years now, and I'm here to empower you. So uh, this is part two of answering the question that was asked, what are your top five audiobooks videos to listen to while working? So if you want to listen to the podcasts that I listen to, you can uh, go to the previous video, and then that's where I talk about the the, the uh, podcasts, but also why I'm not going to necessarily talk about videos, and the reason why I'm making a secondary podcast. So, and by, by working while working, by working on my art, I, I mean that once I've worked out everything that I'm going to draw, and it's time to actually execute, a lot of the time, the execution tends to be mechanical. And so to keep your butt in the chair or my butt in the chair, I sometimes listen to audiobooks or podcasts or listen to a movie uh, commentary or something like that. Or even watch a TV show I've never watched before, but, but, but one of those TV shows that's, that's often not very visual and all you people doing are talking and stuff. So you could, watch that sort of thing and, and, and it and it won't be that big a deal to to miss out the on the um on the visuals all that much all right so i'm going to talk about audiobooks specifically because that's what you would listen to while working and so a lot of what i'm gonna the, the books that i'm recommending are in audio and uh i have a subscription to audible um so but before I even had a subscription to Audible, if you don't want to spend any money doing this audio thing, what you can do is you can go to your local library and they often have audio books there. I listen to a lot of the books I'm going to recommend before I even joined Audi Audible. Um, I, I would either buy the books on audio uh, and I, so I have like CDs or, or tapes of these books or I would go to the library and I would check them out and then listen to them. So I did both those things. And once upon a time, there was even a place near my house that was a audio, audio book lending store where I would just go and it was just all it was was audio books. And then it, would, it was kind of like a like a video store but with audio audiobooks which is was a great idea but it uh, I failed as a business maybe I was the only one doing it I don't know but there are different ways you can get your audiobooks now all right so um, I'm going to put a link to the audible link to these books there will probably be Amazon associate links which means that I will probably get about two or three cents if you were to buy it <laughs> uh, on, on, uh, on Amazon. But every little tiny bit helps, actually, so I don't mind getting that because if enough people buy it, then I, um, uh, I'm able to um, get a, an Amazon gift certificate, which allows me to buy some art products, which allows me to make art, which allows me to give more patrons artwork and stuff like that. So... Uh, let's begin. So I'm going to start with the books that, um, well, some of the books, like uh, some of the books that changed my life. So books are incredible because they do actually change you. They, they change you. They, they, and so some of these books changed my life. I will point out the ones that really did. Um, uh, so... Starting with this one, and and I'm going to kind of uh, uh, layer this so that some of this is going to be philosophy, some of it's going to be spiritual stuff, some of it is going to be uh, um, health and and and, and wellness and um, self help, and then there's going to be other stuff that's going to be fiction. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Aristotle for Everyone by Mortimer J. Adler. This is a book that is a life-changing book uh, because it explains Aristotle. Uh, part of the problem that I see in the world today is that we lack logic. 
we don't think logically, we think emotionally. Uh, we've been taught to think emotionally. Whenever you hear somebody give, put forth their opinion, they often say, I feel that blah. I feel that blah, blah, blah. I feel, I feel, I feel. And uh, that's not what you're actually doing. You're thinking that. You are think, I think that. Nobody says, I think that. And the problem is because the moment you say, I think that, somebody can say, you are wrong. And nobody wants to be wrong. Everybody wants to go, I feel, I feel. You can't tell me what I feel. And well, you can't tell me what I don't feel. And so they say, I feel, so that they can't be told they are wrong. So I think it's terrible that this is the way we think. Or we, it's just really ridiculous. So logic, understanding how to make an argument what the world is like, all these things um, is important. And Aristotle for Everyone explains Arist Aristotle's philosophy in a, uh, in a very clear, clean way so that you can see this is what he thought and this is why he thought it and this is how it's so commonsensical. How commonsensical is this guy? You'll find out. With Aristotle for Everyone, it's super, super easy to understand Aristotle if you listen to this book. The next one, same author, Mortimer J. Adler. The guy was brilliant. This one's called Ten Philosophical Mistakes. It's a must. It's a must. You must read this because it explains the ten fallacies logical fallacies that we in, in our modern culture have embraced without recognizing that it's a fallacy. That is, it's, it's illogical and completely bananas and it's so good. And it explains it very clearly in common sense language so that you could understand what this means and, and, and the way um, thought works and logic works and reality works and perception works and all this other stuff uh it's just amazing so i love that 10 philosophical mistakes both these books changed my life and the way i think the next book uh now that you've 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 been introduced to to uh proper thinking to to aristotle and and proper thinking now you get to, to go back one step back to aristotle's uh teacher and I recommend you read the is Plato's Republic. Plato's Republic, absolutely fantastic. If also you could read the Crito, that is also good by Plato. Both of them kind of talk. Uh, they they introduce you to Plato's teacher, who was Aristotle, and just you could you could see the how logic and reasoning and and thinking and questioning people and. It's fantastic. Like it's you got. If you have, if you don't know, if you haven't read the Republic, I don't know. This is part of the problem. This is part of the problem. <laughs> Not because uh, the Republic is uh, the conclusions of the Republic are are great and and perfect. Uh, actually, they're kind of screwed up. But the 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 notion, the the way that the logic is displayed and the way that proper thinking is displayed is is great okay i love logic i love um aristotle plato and socrates they're my favorite philosophers and believe it or not they are the foundation to my faith uh it is um uh saint augustine he was a platonist and saint thomas aquinas he was a aristotelian a, a follow a, a follower of aristotle and they um and they were uh, theologians, and they were extremely amazing thinkers. Um, and uh, I don't have it on the list, but if you want to read the City of God, you could do that. Or no, the Confession, the Confessions of Saint Augustine, that would be good. Uh, anyway, but um, the the point is that I am a Roman Catholic. I know it's a big controversial thing to say that. Uh, uh, hopefully, I'm not going to get any hate for it. But uh, one of the reasons, uh, w one of the reasons why um, why I say that I might get any hate is because there's a lot of 
uh, misinformation. There's a lot of good information about Catholicism. The a lot of uh, a lot of the bad in in Catholicism is true. Um, we did uh, Catholics have been responsible for some really bad things, and. Uh, and, and if that wasn't the case, uh, Pope John Paul II wouldn't have apologized to the world for having uh, bad Catholics do bad things. So, uh, and, and, and for that, uh, Catholics, uh, we own we own that uh, negativity. We own the bad that we have done um, as a as a as a community. Um, unfor it's very unfortunate, and we're and we're scandalized, and 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 uh, and if and. And we, we hate that that is there. The problem is that um, the focus is only on that, and uh, there has been in, 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 uh, there there has been an equal uh, amount of good that has come from Catholicism. So um, uh, w the books that I'm going to be re recommending are, are 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 that part of the argument. Uh, because it's easy. You just walk out the door. You just watch a movie. You just watch a TV show, and you you automatically get hit by some negative Catholicism thing. Something that is oh, Catholicism evil. Catholicism evil. Evil Catholicism. Look how terrible Catholics all the time. It's just negative, 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 negative. So um, there, there's never there's never the uh, opposing uh, point of view. There's never and and both and, and, and an argument always has two sides. So uh, to to balance that other side, I've also been because it's easy to see find something wrong, but what's the good? So um, the books that I'm going to be recommending here are, is one: The New Anti-Catholicism: The Last Acceptable Prejudice by Philip Jenkins. Um, it just shows that our culture is just extremely anti-Catholic, um, and uh, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's an acceptable prejudice. If you're if you're anti-Catholic, you are applauded. It's a prejudice that people applaud. Okay. Uh, then there's Bearing False Witness, Debunking Centuries of Anti-Catholic History by R Rodney Stark. This is not a Catholic. The guy who, Rodney Stark is not Catholic. He just did a study on where this uh, uh, prejudice came from and why. And, and where these anti-Catholic stories come from. Um, and who, uh, where did, where is the source material? Where was the source? And is there any um, evidence to back up this person's accusations and you often find that this person was of a specific worldview that hated Catholics and accused them of X, Y, and Z and there is no historical backing to any of it. Uh, so, it, it, and, and it's just become part of our culture to assume that it's true when it isn't. So, uh, this actually shows you um, uh, that the the, histor the the historicity be behind the stories and where it comes from and why it was it was done and 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 whether or not there's any basis in fact uh, the other thing the other book the genesis of science how the christian middle ages launched the scientific revolution it actually shows uh, the the heart and soul of science being in this uh christian uh world in this catholic world in the middle ages that's where it started and it, it actually points to all the all the the middle ages the the men in the middle the catholic middle age men and women who started producing all these um ideas and notions that eventually led to the scientific revolution um and and it didn't just fall out of the sky. It wasn't just a bunch of humanists that suddenly, the Renaissance suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Um, it, it was actually uh, the Middle Ages where all these things had found the foundations of. And it also has to do, very interesting, um, with Aristotle. Again, going back to Aristotle, uh, the Catholic Church was so enamored of Aristotle. And Aristotle was such a horrible, horrible scientist. He was the worst scientist ever. He didn't... He wasn't good at science. His metaphysics, great. His uh, Aristotle's metaphysics is the best, but his physics was terrible. So, but 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 the the, the Catholics at the time, a lot of them were so all in with Aristotle that um, they um, they were shooting. They're shooting themselves in the foot when these other guys who were kind of questioning Aristotelian thought and and questioning the physics. 
uh, were, were bringing up all these other ideas, but all of these other ideas were by Catholics as well. Okay, they were also by Christians. Okay, so then the next one is how, uh, how the Catholic Church built Western civilization. So this is another one of these books where uh, it shows you the foundations of all the positive stuff. Like, it doesn't water down uh, the negative. It actually points it out. But they also show that within this negative, there was this positive. And so um, it's not one note. Catholics aren't one note. They weren't like, this is the oppression and this is not. No, this, the, 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 the fight has always been between um, too far uh, in, 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 in the secular camp or too far in the Puritan camp in Catholicism. There's always been this internal fight between, between those two camps. Sometimes it goes too far in the Puritanical and sometimes it goes too par, far in the, in the secular and then and there's scandals on both sides when that happens. And, and, and so it, it's, it, so you could, in this book you could see the middle, the middle part where all the all the good stuff where the where everything was working great and and things started developing in a good way um that's what this one also focuses on it's it's very it's it's, it's a fascinating book and along with that book is how the irish save civilization so uh this book is interesting too and uh, and it's it's not necessarily uh written by a catholic but it's it, it it, it also shows, it kind of uh, piggybacks and, and uh, reinforces some of what the other book said, uh, because the Irish, um, especially the Irish monks, did so much good in, uh, the, uh, in, Western, in the Western world, and, and um, it, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. Um, the only criticism I have with that book is that for some reason, the author pits uh, St. Augustine and St. Uh, Patrick uh, as if they were rivals or at odds with each other, uh, when they are both uh, believing Catholics, they were both uh, uh, they uh, they both are saints, and they both did good in their own way, in spite of the fact that Saint Augustine was a Roman, and was living unfortunately some of the cultural Roman tropes, um, and and uh, Saint um, Saint Patrick, you know, he did his own thing in his own way, but they were both essentially brothers working for the same end. So I don't know why there was this false uh, uh, verses in that book uh, between both of them. Uh, he, it just seemed like the author just hated St. Augustine and just wanted to besmirch him. Um, the other, okay, so, and then here comes one, I'm only, okay, so the next author I, is G.K. Chesterton. And G.K. Chesterton is one of my all-time favorite authors ever to write anything. He's so good. He's amazing and an incredible, incredible thinker. Uh, he wrote so much, there's just, it's just too much. And all of it is in the public domain. However, um, I'm only going to recommend one book. If you're going to read one book, this is the book to read. And that is The Everlasting Man. The Everlasting Man is one of those books that the modern world needs to read more than ever. Um, it's, it's this, um, it's kind of like, and he, and, and G.K. Chesterton wrote, uh, he was an Edwardian at the very, la at the very tail end of the Edwardian age. And he was very eccentric. And uh, he wrote a very uh, compelling book about, uh, just thought he, he would he would he would uh, his favorite thing in the entire world was to argue at pubs because he was english he was british and uh, he um he would love arguing at pubs his favorite thing in the world was arguing in pubs and robert shaw and a bunch of and um hg wells were his contemporaries and he would um argue with them and they were uh it was it's, he's amazing so the everlasting man is just a, a kind of. There is a a bit in there about it. It's just a commentary about the oversimplification of uh, modern secular scientific thought, um, and 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 how and how um, at the time um, people were just simplifying man in such a way that 
they, they, it seemed like they were inventing things about um, early man that didn't have any backing. But on top of that, it, it's, it's, it's the notion that um, all religions are the same and all this other stuff. He actually explains why this is also not the case. So it, it's, it's really interesting. He's kind of like the counter Joseph Campbell, you know, the, the guy who wrote the um, Hero with a Thousand F Faces. He countered um, Joseph Campbell's arguments a hundred years before Joseph Campbell even came up with his arguments, which is really interesting. Okay, and um, the next book would be um, the man that was deeply, deeply affected by reading G.K. Uh, Chesterton's Everlasting Man, and that is C.S. Lewis. And I would highly recommend reading two of C.S. Lewis's books, Miracles and the Abolition of Man. Miracles is explaining the logic behind uh, believing in miracles. Uh, believe me, there is a logic behind it, and it explains the illogic of not of 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 not uh, giving um, being open minded enough to to even have the have the notion that a miracle can happen uh, and it's extremely logical and extremely clear and readable. The next one is the abolition of man. The ab abolition of man is is about um, the the. It, it shows that modern thought is going to destroy man uh, under a, there, there's a there's a certain form of thinking that um, that is that that is leading to the destruction of man and um, the the only problem that I see with the abolition of man is it's extremely dense it's it's way 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 too it's, it's actually extremely difficult. It's one of these things... Okay, so I was reading... I listened to The Abolition of Man a few times, and I even read it, and I had to ask my wife, who's way smarter than me, what the heck you, uh, this meant. Like, what does this mean? I don't understand this sentence. This is so dense. So that would be my only thing about The Abolition of Man, is sometimes it could be um, uh, a little bit too smart. Okay, now moving on from philosophy to storytelling. Uh, if you're going, if you want to read, sto if you want to write stories, and you want uh, some good audio books to listen to to educate yourself in story, then I would recommend Story by Robert McKee. Very clear, very simple. It's really fun, and it's and it'll educate you in all things story. And then I would also recommend, if you're going to read that, I would read the, this one first, which is Invisible Ink by Brian McDonald. So Invisible Ink gives you the theme, gives you the, 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 almost like the, um, the bird's eye view of all story so that you can um, really wrap your head around what story is all about. And then you read Story by Robert McKee, where it breaks down story into bits so that you could construct it and make it into something. The craft of story is in Robert McKee's book. The, the overview of the point of story is in, is in Invisible Ink. Then we've got a little bit more of the things that are like a little bit more self-help, a little bit more of what can you do in your life to become a better person kind of a thing. And so uh, first recommendation, here would be How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Of course, this is a classic. Um, just read that book. You could, um, it, it, it gives you just overall commonsensical things that you can do just to be a pleasant person. Then um, Level Up Your Life by Stephen Cam. Uh, he's, got a, he's got a super hero you thing I think that's what it is anyway um, he he um, he wrote this book and it's for nerds about becoming braver becoming a superhero taking on the world and 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 um, 
and, and taking on challenges and not being afraid and, and setting goals and, and doing what you need to do to, to empower yourself is a very empowering book. And you know, as I say at the beginning of all my videos, I'm here to empower you. Well, this book, Level Up Your Life by Stephen Kim, is talking to nerds about doing that, getting empowered, leveling up. There's a lot of superhero references. There's a lot of D&D references. There's a lot of video game references and all this other stuff. And it's also about health and it's about uh, working out. And it's, uh, it, there's, there's, it, it's got everything. It's, it, it just talks about this guy's journey and, and, and how to apply some of the lessons that he's learned throughout his life. And it's, and it's, a, and it's a really inspiring, very great book. The other next book I want to... Um, recommend is The Power of Habit by Charles Dunhig. And so this kind of breaks down what habits are like and where it comes from and why and all this other stuff so that when you want to apply to do anything that you want to empower yourself to do and get it done, you understand the science behind creating habit. So I highly recommend it. Uh, then this book here, uh, this is a life-changing book too, Choosing the Strong Path, Reversing the Downward Spiral of Aging by Stephen Drullard, Fred Barlett, and Dr. Dr. Marnie Bupart. And what this is all about is explaining to you that after a certain age, for example, the age of 30, uh, your body starts um, uh, losing muscle instead of gaining muscle, and the more muscle it starts to re take away, the weaker you become, and by the time you're an old person, you are one of these people that can barely do and you're, break, you're falling down, breaking your hip and all this other stuff. Well, it turns out that you don't have to, that doesn't have to happen. It's actually called, it's a, it's a, it's a disease and I forgot what the name of the disease is, but the, the, it's a disease that is preventable and all you got to do is strength training. You have to start strength training and the moment you start strength training, your body starts to de-age to a certain extent. Um, it, I mean, you're still going to age and die, but the, but the, but the, the book, what it does is it tells you that um, if you're going to live to be 80 or 90, it's, it would be fantastic if your life was full of energy and power and you can do, still, still do all the things that you, you want to do um, and you don't have to be brittle and, 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 and your, your body can actually stay young, work young as if you were young, but still be an old person that is eventually going to die, but at least you're going to have a, a more a greater, more uh, productive life. And that's a fantastic, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's a great, great book. Uh, life changing, like I said. Okay, now let's get on to fiction. All right, so um, the first book I'm going to recommend is Lord of the Rings by J.R. Tolkien. If you haven't listened to it, please listen to it. It's different than the movies. It's uh, uh, there. There's some things that the movies do better, and there's some things that the book does better. And the book does the language better. Like like the way that the book is told is uh, extremely epic. But the the problem is that um, if you watch the movies, it's 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 a lot 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 slower. So um, uh, don't expect to rush uh, for for the for the story to rush. It, it, it takes its time especially at the beginning. But once it gets going, it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so the, here's the thing. So, and then there is kind of almost the antithesis of C.S. Lewis's Narnia and Tolkien's uh, Lord of the Rings, and that is The Magicians. The Magicians is a show on Netflix. That's how I started, uh, I became aware that it was a book. And I decided to listen to the book. The book, The Magicians, is by Led Grossman. And if you listen to the book, it is so much better than the TV show. And on top of that, just listen to the rest of the, of the series. It is completely different than the, than the series. Uh, and it is amazing. And it's so good. And it's so cynical. Um... It's fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. The whole series from the magicians on to the very last. Forget the name of the, all the all the other books, but highly, highly, highly recommend the entire series. Lev Grossman's The Magicians series is 
amazing and it won't ruin the, the TV show because the TV show is doing its own thing. Uh, another one of my all-time favorite uh, fantasy books is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark, and they made uh, it. I think it's all they made a, a, a mini series out of it. I think it's on Netflix or on Amazon. I forgot which one, and you, or you could buy it direct video. But I highly recommend the book. The book is a bazillion times better than any of the. It, it's it's insanely good. It's insanely good. Um, it has a very, very strange structure. Uh, I just just um, just wanted to give you a heads up that it doesn't read. It's not a traditional book. It doesn't. It doesn't. It hasn't. Or I should say, it's not a traditional story. It doesn't have uh, the um, the Robert McKee formula completely there. There is a lot of things that that the that the form that that that, that Robert McKee would probably say that is wrong. And by the time I fir the first time I ever listened to the book, I was like, that's it? What happened? But it, it wasn't until the second time around that I was just like, this is brilliant, I love it. So um, it took me, it, it was great all the way through until the end, and then I was kind of disappointed with the end, but now I'm not. Now I love the end. So it's, it's very, it's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic book. You, you, you have to you have to listen to it. It's fantastic. All right, so um, I don't know why I have this in here, um, so I'm gonna skip it. Uh, I should have said this earlier, so I'll, I'll skip it for here. And then uh, let me see. So I have a uh, okay. So the next book I would like to recommend is a Replay by Ken uh, Grimwood. It, this is an amazing time travel story. If you like time travel. Uh, this is one of those time travel stories that is amazing. And it's, it's a time loop story, one of those Groundhog Day type stories. But it breaks the formula in, a, in an amazing way. Uh, so uh, highly, highly recommend Replay by Ken Greenwood. Another series that I'm going to recommend is the Undying Mercenary series by B.V. Larson, beginning with Steel World. It's just about a... A soldier who gets recruited to the Earth uh, uh, Army, uh, uh, Marines, Space Marines, uh, but they're actually working for this um, empire, uh, and, and, and Earth is only one tiny um, uh, kind of colony that was conquered by this imperial uh, uh, alien species, and the only in, in those in that species would destroy any alien uh, uh, civilization that couldn't provide any value to the to the empire. So Earth ended up being able to provide militia and and soldiers. So that's the only reason the Earth was not wiped out. And so it's about this soldier who joins them. This uh, uh, space soldiers. This this uh, space marines. But the unique thing about being a space marine is that um, you don't die uh, well, officially. Well, you, you could go out and get killed, but you're uploaded into a new body. And so um, you're constantly be, you're, you are dying, but you are uh, be, being resurrected every single time. And it's, and it's all the adventures that this dude has in being... Uh, an undying mercenary, and it's really funny and and very exciting and a lot of fun to, to listen to. The other book series that I would recommend is all the Dresden Files series, the Dresden by Jim Butcher. Uh, it's if if it's it's a magician who is a private investigator, and that's it. So it's a fantasy. It's it, it's it's a modern day, but with kind of uh, like an underpinning where there's uh, fantasy elements in it. So the world's got vampires and unicorns and mermaids and things like that. And he's a private investigator who uh, gets hired to solve cases. And so you learn, and, and, he's, and he's a very fun character. And there was a TV show, a short-lived TV show. It only lasted a season. 
but um, and the series is actually really very different than the than the series, which is probably why it flopped. But um, highly recommend uh, the Dresden series by Jim Butcher. And in the same type of of uh, story, uh, in this time being a wizard who happens to be a World War II spy, I highly recommend The Towers Alchemist by Alicia Escobar, my wife. And I recommend it not just because she's my wife and I like, uh, and I want her to uh, uh, sell more audiobooks, but uh, the, and she didn't read it, by the way. She didn't, my wife did not read this audiobook. Uh, but the the story is great. I stand by it. I love the story of the Towers Alchemist so much so that the comic strip that I'm doing, uh, Isabella, the character of Isabella and Ken and Brand in that story, in my comic, is from the Towers Alchemist. So, and I'm making a lighthearted version of the characters, but this is more of a serious kind of James Bond with magic in World War II kind of a story. So that's what uh, you could expect uh, from from this and and the main character is uh, is a woman not not a, a man but uh, it still kind of has that feel um, and there's a lot of suspense especially in the first one and especially in the very first half of the first one it's just one giant ball of suspense it's fantastic okay and then now I'm going to uh, move on to a little bit something that 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 might be a little bit more for artists and there's only going to be two one of them and you wouldn't expect this is for artists but just hear me out uh, I love this book it's another one of these world life-changing books um, all marketers are liars by Seth Godin all marketers are liars actually it says it's crossed out and it says all marketers are storytellers I think that's what it says and what what this is by Seth Godin is um, explaining to you how when you are trying to explain to somebody the worth of what you produce as an artist um, the ideal way to explain it is through story which goes back to the Robert McKee and goes back to the invisible ink thing that it's about story it's about connecting with the person you are talking to and the best way to create connection is through story so just listen to that book it will change the way you are able to talk about your art and the other book that I would recommend that is an audio is real artists don't starve by Jeff Goins so if you believe that somehow being an artist is not a lucrative thing it is because you have the wrong mindset and so real artists don't starve go throughout the history of art and it shows you what these artists did to be successful artists and make a living doing art and it breaks down the key points in artists uh, lives um, that that made them successful so the, and that's it that's these are the books that I recommend uh, a ton of these changed my life and influenced the way that I think and the, and, and, and the way that I see the world and it has um, greatly um, shaped um, my observation and the way and, and, and where people are coming from and why they're coming from that uh, place and uh, the way they're thinking and who's what worldviews and philosophies they are putting forth that they don't realize they're putting forth um, they don't realize that that these ideas came from somebody who came from somebody else who was taught by this person who and then you're hearing it on TV or you're hearing it from a, uh, a, a, a politician or you're hearing it from from a teacher and you don't realize that this is not necessarily um, some kind of commonsensical thing but it's something that was taught through the specific philosophers who put it forth and they may not be right or are they but the question is can you question correctly and see if you could get the answer 
through logically and it doesn't go into uh, argument at absurdum where it just becomes absurd um, so uh, you, there's a lot uh, of different things in the world that are worth uh, understanding and listening to and, and hearing things out and balancing your worldview and not falling into the trap of just um, doing that whole ironic thing where um, where uh, you're being told that X, Y, and Z is brainwashing but isn't being told that a type of brainwashing. And so... Um, you you so so it, it it'll it'll help you question and understand and at least give you uh, ways to think uh, ways to question um, a foundation in, in 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 solid thought so solid thought uh, fun fiction because oh my gosh the fiction that I that I that I'm sharing with you is fantastic it's so much fun and notice it was almost all fantasy and science fiction uh, because that's where I live I love that stuff. Um, and um okay and that's it from me thank you for supporting me on patreon please support uh me uh, i highly encourage you to support me on patreon if you so would and i hope this has been helpful and i will talk to you next time all right bye